Okay, are we on? We're here? Okay, I'm gonna call this uh, regular meeting of the Aiken Planning Commission on Tuesday, May the 12th, uh, 2020 in session. <clears throat> First item of business is approval of the minutes from the April 14th, 2020 work session and regular meeting. So do I have a motion on that? Motion to approve. Second. second. Somebody second it? Second. All right, good. Everybody uh, in favor, raise your right hand. Everybody opposed, same sign. Good. Minutes are approved. Uh, old business was an item which uh, was originally scheduled, has now been continued until uh, some future time, so we won't do with that. New business. Application number 20-20017 annexation request on Pine Log and Richardson Lake Road by Crowell and Company. And we'll do A and B together. B is application number 20-22005 for a concept plan approval on uh, Pine Log and Richardson Lake Road by Crowell and Company. So do we have anybody, Ryan, that is prepared to speak on behalf of these uh, proposals. Yeah, let me unmute them and bring them into the meeting. Also, I'll remind everybody it flashed on the screen there um, uh, for um, a brief minute there, but we are currently monitoring an email um, address, pccomment at cityofakensc.gov. You've already had a lot of, of um, responses submitted to you either as part of the packet or a digital submittal today. We also distributed those to um, applicants and any interested parties. And I have a handful of, of items here um, that have come in in the interim. I'll go ahead and, and kind of introduce those. Uh, we have an additional comment that you did not receive from um, as well as additional comment from somebody who commented previously, Ray Cole, um, saying that he had already sent concerns about the, the, the 74 additional units in Kemper Downs. Um, he wanted to point out that, it, that if it's a desire to match the new homes in the existing neighborhood, the multifamily structures, which are the townhomes in this case, were not in the original design. So he has concerns about the triplex buildings, uh, requesting the consideration of single family homes um, only. And again, reiterates concern about um, Bay Meadows being a through long uh, stretch street and um, consideration of a three-way stop at the intersection. We also have another one from Nancy McKenzie um, in the neighborhood uh, off Bay Meadows Drive and is concerned about it changing from a quiet single cul-de-sac style entrance to where there would be through traffic. Um, mentions consideration of a three-way stop at Kemper Downs and Bay Meadows. Uh, to try to reduce speed um, of people transitioning from one side of the neighborhood to the other. Um, ask for consideration of a speed bump or speed hump down Bay Meadows to, um, and we would have just some, some basically I'll interject on there. So public safety reviews speed humps and, and does so in conjunction with um, studying certain traffic, uh, you know, levels and speeds and things like that. But also we, we do run those by public safety, make sure they're not interfering with any below ground utilities. And then that an alternate in entrance should be um, strongly considered. Um, they mentioned potentially a, 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 where their current retaining pond is uh, possibly to the side of that. And then a third, um, and this is fairly lengthy from John um, L. Mills. Um, this is uh, representing, uh, sorry, on, on the same, uh, expressing concerns about the additional 74 units. Um, the this con concerns stem from increase in traffic associated with the development. Um, feels important to draw attention to the, that the proposed development would more than no, more than double the current size of the existing all going out through the same entrance point. Um,
and then concern about Pine Log Road in general um, as as uh, an, an increase in traffic um, along there and how, how traffic is already heavy and then um, concerns about how this would add to that. Um, I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything that he has written here. So uh, other than he just says he's not received a single positive comment from any um, other residents. So those are the three comments we received. Um, nothing new so far in the PC comment folder. Okay, so uh, we've got those, you emailed to us those comments and I came by and picked up a hard copy of most of them. And uh, the, 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 they are primarily concerned with the safety issue in, involving speed, possible uh, speeding, the three-way stop sign issue, uh, and another entrance and another entrance issue seem to be uh, a fairly uh, common theme too. Trying to develop another interest. Who who is here to speak on behalf of this, Brian? We have Can anybody come in. I mean, where's the develop? We need to hear from the developer. Or it, they, they, you might not have them on your screen, but they are they are in here. Their video is is uh, is in here. That yeah. Well, let's uh, hear, go ahead. Let's hear from them. Yeah, Bob. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, this is David Banks. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. It's David Banks. I'm the with Southern Partners. I'm here representing the owner who is the developer who is also here with me. Um, Mark Gellum. And uh, we're willing to answer the questions any you know if you have them directly posed, or I can just speak about the development in general. Go ahead and give us give us about a, a few minutes spiel, and then address the questions that 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 you've heard raised. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, this is like you like we said. This is a an extension of, of the Kipper Downs development. It's um, the Kroll and Company who who I'm representing. They have been in this development building houses for the last two or three years. I think they built about 35 of the houses in that that original development. Um, they are, you know, they, they've had a lot of success in there. They, they like the neighborhood. They like the, you know, the people they work with, you know, and, and saw the end of this road and, and, and question about, you know, is it possible to, you know, continue on with this development? Um, um, the, you know, so we looked at it for them we were originally coming in as a, I think it's an R3, RS6, I believe that's right, Brian, the original development. That's um, correct. Yeah, and he said we had to go to the, the PR, uh, the PR plan, and and that's where the, the townhomes, you know, I think that's been a question. Um, you know, the Kroll and Company builds townhomes, they, they like them, people seem to like them because they buy them. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of, and that this is going to fit in with this neighborhood. They're kind of away from the original development. So if you're, if you're living in the original development, you, you don't have, you don't like townhomes, well, you don't have to see them because you don't have to walk back there. Um, but if you, if you're living in this development, you know, they, they'll be there and you'll know when you buy your house, they're, they're in that area. Um, so that's speaking of the townhomes. Um, the traffic we've looked at a number of different ways trying to get a second entrance because I know that's a big thing with the city. Um, uh, it's really impractical um, going through. I, I heard in the, the, the pre meeting about, you know, the ability to go through some common area that is in Kemper Downs. That's that's a, it's a really a non starter that to, topo. It just doesn't work. Wetlands, floodplain, other things like that. Um, Going, going to Pine Log through the, the remainder of the property, that, that would be almost impossible to build. It would be financially impossible for, for this development. I mean, there's about a 30 or 40 foot drop from this area to the to the to a wetland stream creek it's with dams. It would, it would be very difficult to do that. Um, traffic, um, you know, I, I understand the, the concerns you know, speed humps. I'm not really a fan of adding stop signs. We've talked about traffic calming. You know, we, we would really work with the city engineer or their, their traffic engineer, you know, and, and help with that. And you know, I think Mark, Mark said that, 
you know, that's something we would work out with y'all. So, um, and uh, the traffic study, which was mentioned in the pre-meeting, I mean, it, it's doable. I don't think it's going to show anything other than it, the traffic is not going to, the level of service at the, inter, at the intersection with Pine Log is not going to be affected by this. Um, it's, it's just not enough traffic. I mean, I know it sounds like a lot of homes and um, but it's really not that that large of a number, um, in my opinion. And I live in a large subdivision with over 400 homes with two entrances, so it's basically the same thing. So I guess you know it's just just not that not that big of a deal for for the engineering or personally. So anyway, I think that's it. Mark, you want to add anything? I think you covered it pretty well. well. I too, I know that it sounds like a lot of home, a lot, a lot of traffic, double the number of homes. But I live in a neighborhood with a thousand, over a thousand homes and two entrances. I've lived in a neighborhood with over a hundred homes and and multiple cars. And so, it, on the surface, it sounds like a lot of traffic, but it really, uh, it, it's really not going to be that much. Is, is it more than it is getting now? Yeah, and we understand that, and we're yeah. willing to do some traffic calming, some. Whatever, whatever the engineer wants to do, we'll we'll do. To we don't want yeah. people speeding through the neighborhood anyway. We we're very concerned with safety. How about let me let me ask you a couple of quick questions. How about the speed bump issue? You have any problems with putting in speed some speed bumps in through there? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, they're usually placed about every six hundred feet, and you if you put them on if you start a road, you need to put them on the entire thing. Uh, so I think it'd be maybe four down this road. I personally like speed humps. Um, a lot of people don't. Those are usually the people that want to get in and out or late for work. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's, it does slow people down. Cars parking on the side of the road slows people down. Uh, that's another traffic calming device. I mean, it's written in there to allow cars to park on the road. Um, you know, I, I think the, the biggest thing is, is, you know, and, and it's already in the neighborhood. It's kids playing in the street. I saw one of the emails. Well, really, kids should be playing in the street. Um, you know, we, we're going to provide, you know, walking paths, dog park, things like that, which hopefully they'll utilize that in the existing neighborhood if, if they can work that out. Let me ask you a quick, let me ask you a quick question. Uh, you heard the comments about the, uh, the current street being crowded with vehicles. Is there any way to deal with that issue in relation to this new subdivision in the back? Um, we are, like you, uh, that was mentioned in the pre-meeting, and I hate to keep referencing that because not everybody was may not have seen that. Uh, we are going to an 18-foot wide driveway, hoping to get that so we can get cars, two cars parked in the driveway. Uh, you know, there will be a garage on every house. Um, a lot of people don't can't park in the garage. I'm one of them because we've got too much stuff in it. But, um, you know, that, that's what it's for. Uh, you know, um, the, you know we're, we're not opposed to parking on one side of the street. I mean, I think that's a good idea. It gets, gets people, you know, I wouldn't want to be the side that everybody's parking on, but, you know, that's, uh, that would be my only concern with that. Yeah. Is that why you, is that the reason you widened the driveway width in this new one to try to avoid that? Yeah, we, well, they put a garage, a 16 foot wide drive, 16 foot wide garage, and you want to be able to, you know, get to the garage so you're 16 feet of a typical parking space is nine by 18. And when, when you do commercial sites, so that, that, that allows two cars to park in the driveway. Yeah. By. Yeah. Yeah. We can. Okay. Uh, comments. Anybody else got any questions for this uh, for the developer? I have a question, Jack. Go ahead, Ryan. Um, you guys uh, assume you get this passed and, and you start construction. How, how are you going to deal with the, the heavy construction traffic trucks? I mean, you got a lot. Of, uh, you got a lot of trees you got to carry out of there. You got concrete trucks coming in and out of there. How, how are you going to handle uh, the wear and tear on the existing? drive coming in just to, you know so you can build your facility well we we have this in every place we build 
where we, we bring in we bring in trucks and we damage the roads and we repair the roads. So, okay. uh, so, so you'll repay the road coming in if, 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 if we, let's say we get a big rainy season and, and you know what happens with rain with the subgrade and you got, you know, tandem axle trucks coming through uh, with potholes and things. So you, you're prepared to re, re, resurface the road as necessary. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, I think we would patch the road if that's what you I mean. Resurfacing and patching them in those aren't the same things, obviously. Well, okay, I'll take that back. It, it, it would depend on how bad the road is, I guess. But but to whatever damage that is there, you'll you'll fix it in a, in an acceptable manner, whether that's patching or or what. I mean, we could work with John Bull on that too. I mean, we've done we've talked about that before in other subdivisions, and you know, um, well. I don't know if I talked, I think it was in the county we talked about that. And, and you know, I had some, uh, some you, you just, I mean, you're going to have a lot of trucks coming in and out of there, be it concrete or, or your, your workers that work there, framers. Um, so, so there's going to be a lot of, of traffic during the construction period. It won't last forever. But um, yeah. I, I, that was a, a concern that I had heard. I just want to ask. Jack, I got a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, on the open space calculation, did you include the detention pond in that uh, percentage? Do you know? I mean, it's been a while, but I, I'm, on, I'm almost 100% sure I did not. I did not, no. Okay. No. And I think the ponds, when actually designed it, it's going, I think it's going to get a lot smaller, but I oversized that just to make sure because we hadn't got through the design process. Um, it may be a, a good bit more, but I didn't. I didn't want to undershoot it and not meet the, what we talked about here first. So. Well, I think y'all are completely out of the floodplain, aren't you? It was hard for me to yes. tell. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We are. That is correct. You saw uh, just one more additional question. You saw that uh, one proposal was that the concept plan would have to be approved by, by uh, public safety uh, regarding emergency turnarounds and apparatus turnarounds. Did you see that? Uh, yeah, I, don't, I really don't see how that could be a question in our, I mean, the, the street parking would be the only thing that I could see a concern on that because I mean, we don't even, it's not, um, it's not a dead end street. I mean, it does circle upon itself. We're how, about this, how about this? How about this waiver regarding the eaves? You can the eaves on the homes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that a we problem? Have, we haven't uh, built a home in Kemper Downs that had an eave on it um, on the sides, and we haven't built them yeah. probably on 250 homes a year that Keystone builds uh, across our area that have that have soffit and extended soffit and fascia on the sides of the homes it's just the way we build the home okay i've really never had a comment or question from any buyer on any of that mr chair all right I got yes a, sir Go ahead. i got a question um in regards to the phase two time frame um what is your expected time frame on the construction or completion of that The, the the whole neighborhood or the just the development section the development piece and the neighborhood oh we would certainly like to start construction and putting uh, streets and, and drains in and be done within three and a half years we'd certainly like it to be done closer than uh, quicker than that but with the homes and everything in three and a half years uh five years i mean we have to turn property over quickly to make that uh, something we want to do. So five years at the most is would, would be what, total. yeah, five at the total would be at the, at the, at the back end. We want to go, we always want to go faster. Thank you. Y'all mentioned uh, speed humps to possibly slow people down. Are those normally preferable to a three-way stop sign? Uh, three-way stop signs don't work. They're not a traffic calming device. Um, typically, people that if it doesn't make sense, people will run them. 
and uh, then it becomes a danger because people, I, I, it, we try not to do that in traffic calming. Um, it's, it, it used to be a thing and now it's just, a, now it just makes it dangerous intersections because people don't expect to stop and they, they blow through it. Um, now people who live there do, but I'm just saying if you don't, if you don't expect the first stop and you see no reason for it, a lot of times you just don't, don't stop. Now, if the city engineer chooses that, that's that would be acceptable. I mean, it's y'all's roads. Um, so. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Questions? Comments? Anything? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, we did have one additional question come in that, that potentially. Um, uh, regarding this is from um, Moises Attilis, I think is how I don't want to mess up his last name, but asking about the status of the HOA, whether this would be uh, your desire to, um, to become part of the existing HOA or a new uh, HOA for this section. What, what we plan to do there is have a new HOA. And I talked to, uh, uh, I guess, John Mills, I think. Um, a new HOA and the developer would be in control of that. That HOA would maintain the, the dog park, the walking trail, and, and uh, administer the covenants for the homes that, are, that, are, that, that we're going to be building in the new section. And we'd certainly work with uh, the old HOA as well. And when we're all done, uh, we could combine the two. And um, we, we have a standard set of covenants that we use in all of our neighborhoods. We didn't develop originally uh, Kemper Down, so they're not the same. So we're very familiar with using the covenants that we have that we think are very good and help protect property values very, very well. And at some point, of course, when we're done in three and a half years, uh, that, that reverts back to the HOA and the HOAs could combine at that point. In fact, when I talked to the HOA president, uh, we use Tim Bragg and Associates right now to administer our covenants, and and uh, I think there was some interest in us using the same uh, you know, service provider there. Okay. Anybody else? Comments or questions? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ryan. Do we have uh, anybody who are a way to have anybody who might want to speak, uh, who might want to speak against this or not? Can we, are we geared up to that or not? So we've had two additional comments come in in just the last uh, two seconds. So um, we're, I guess we'll probably need to cut off okay. the comment period here shortly um, as you start to deliberate. But uh, these comments are again from uh, Ray Cole asking, about um, why why they're planning multifamily for the second phase when the first phase only has single family, and from Candace Kimbrell um, that just noted that it, oh I guess she had submitted the previous comments that again reiterate um, looking at the three way stop because of the three way intersection. So um, again, uh, just kind of reiterating that. Yeah, I, I don't have any problem with a three way stop. I, I don't. I mean, I, I heard the arguments about it, but it, I don't think some people are not going to follow any of them. I mean, so I don't have any problem with putting them up if people, we can't make people follow them. Obviously you can't make people follow speed, speeding or anything else. So, so I would be in favor of the city taking, uh, requiring that if we could and the speed bumps too. And, uh, but uh, other than that, if we don't have any other comments, I guess then, we will just cut off. We will give them, what do you want to give them another 30 seconds? Anybody who's got, who's got any further comments, pro or con, you got one minute uh, to, uh, to submit them. And at the end of that one minute, Ryan, start, start the clock and we'll, uh, we'll then uh, move forward with a, with a motion. Ryan, uh, since we have a minute here, I know we've had kind of a drip, drip, drip of comments. Can you tell us the total number of comments against this that we've received, uh, both in our packets, digitally, email, in the last few minutes here, the total number? 
Yeah, so it looks like uh, C. Eighteen, but I think we had two or three people that submitted multiple comments. So I think twenty. Uh, let's see, what did they say? So about sixteen people, give or take. Roughly, yes. Okay, thank you. And they were all uh, raising concerns about traffic and speed and whatnot. No one, none of those sixteen were positive, if you will. Correct. Thank you. Right. Brian, the only concern that I would have, I would like to see what the comments that public safety would have regarding the emergency apparatus, apparatus turnaround. That's my biggest concern in my mind about this. I hear all the other concerns. I'm okay with that, but getting the emergency vehicle in and out and then cars on the side of the street, that just, it just raised a big concern in my mind. All right, so the minute is up and we received two additional comments again from repeat commenters. Okay. Um, one, one again from Mr. Cole asking if, if they could one more time address the single versus multifamily in the new section, why they, they feel it appropriate for multifamily in the new section. Um, there is a, sorry, hey, another one. Um, I'm guessing, Sorry, this is kind of difficult through this format because um, we wouldn't typically allow people to come in two or three times to make comment and back and forth. Um, so this is a little bit new for us. Um, what, uh, this is again from Mr. Tillies asking about the HOA, whether they can guarantee that that will be the setup for the HOA. And um, Uh, we have another request from, um, this is from Mr. Mills to address the uh, time frame for when, I guess, construction may start and when it would, uh, we, we, we already addressed that it, it, we're hoping to kind of substantially complete construction in the three to five year time frame. And then um, asking about uh, some, another one asking about whether there would be sidewalks. They're coming in um, in droves now. Um, and then there's another one from, sorry. Okay, yeah, I believe we've covered all of them. This is a kind of just reiterating a, a similar, uh, the same comment that was sent before that you received in your packet. So somebody just sent um, the same comment that was already distributed to you. Okay, let me let me ask the developer or the, uh, whoever the guy, I can't remember your name, I'm sorry, representing Crowell. Uh, just talk briefly about the multiple housing. Why are you doing that? Okay, thanks. Uh, we're doing that. We, we're seeing that uh, in our consultants that we use, uh, we use a group out of Atlanta called Market Insight. They are saying there's a lot of demand for townhomes and for living in townhomes. There's a lot of folks who don't want to maintain any, any, um, any yard whatsoever. And what we've typically done with townhomes is when we develop that, uh, we get a, as part of their cover, their HOA dues, they have uh, landscaping included. So we would be maintaining those townhome units. We would be uh, maintaining their yards for them. I say we, the HOA would be maintaining their yards. So that, that's one of the you know benefits to, to live in the townhome. You don't have to worry about your uh, your main, your lawn maintenance and and some big folks these days just don't want a big yard. So uh, we thought that that would uh, meet some market demand in that area. And the walking trail, the biggest amenity that people like is uh, is walking trail. So we wanted to put that in so that the residents of uh, the new section and the and the older section of Kemper Downs would be able to enjoy that because there's no amenity in Kemper Downs presently, uh, as well as we've, we're seeing that the dog park, uh, we've seen those are really popular. And so those those two things we wanted to do and have have our townhome uh, folks and our single or detached folks enjoy that along with the- uh, Look, let me ask the, you, well, let, me, let, me, let me stop you right quick and ask you another question. I think you maybe, maybe might 
uh, give a little further information. What's going to be the price point of the detached houses and what's going to be the price point of each townhome? Do you have an idea? Well, I, it's going to be more expensive than what the homes we just got through building in Kemper Down because prices are going up. I mean, materials go up, labor goes up, so it's going to be more expensive homes. And what we typically see with townhomes are those are more expensive per square foot than the detached homes. So the, the right. price is going to be higher than it is now in Kemper Down. So well, what's the, what's going to be the what what's going to be the square footage? What's going to be the square footage of the townhomes? I, I think we have uh, some that are fifteen hundred square feet, and there's a twenty eight foot wide. There's, there's twenty eight foot wide, and then twenty six foot wide, and fifteen hundred to I think I think eighteen hundred uh, heated square feet. So, it, so you're, so you're, you're, you're talking about a price. You're talking about a price point of hundred and fifty thousand dollars and up. Is that correct? It's going to be more than that. Yeah, it's yeah. Be more and that's a minimum. Two hundred and up. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just would like to get that out there because I mean, you know, yeah. people who are worried about them, you know, if somebody's going to come in and spend two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars on a on a piece of property that uh, ought to make you feel a little better about, <laughs> about them, uh, but ma maybe not, but uh, or what it's worth, you know, might help you a little bit. Add value to the, to the neighborhood. Yeah, I have a, I have a follow-up question. Y'all, uh, when the sidewalks are brought up, you just said that people love dog parks and people love walking trails, but they might also like having a sidewalk that leads to those things. As far as I'm concerned, those aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. So, you know, we mentioned before about how there's a concern of the streets being filled with cars. And if people are now going to have to be walking on the streets to get to the uh, walking trail, walking on the streets to get to the dog park, because there are no sidewalks, you know, why did you make that choice? That's a good question. We can control in the, in the new section, we can design the covenants and the rules there to require parking on one side of the street. Now, Unless you've got a policeman out there directing people, sometimes that's hard to enforce, but we can at least attempt to do that. Uh, sidewalks uh, that just started a new section kind of seem strange uh, just to start a new section with, with sidewalks and it adds more impervious surface so it can create some drainage issues. I've never looked at sidewalks and said, hey, that's real pretty. Uh, so I don't think it's, it's as attractive. We want to keep as much greenscape as we can. And uh, the way the trail is uh, designed, uh, you know, you, you, it's, it's right at the entrance of the new section. Yeah, you have to, you'll have to walk in the street to get there. But it, I, 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 don't, I think that we can do that fairly safely. Okay. okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, and uh, uh, Ryan, we will. Uh, and we we've heard we've had the opening session. We've had an open session. We've had responses. Now we need to we need to have a motion of some kind to move on with this thing. So, do I have a motion? Somebody's got a, somebody needs to make a motion of some kind. If you want to table it, if you want to continue it, if you want to move forward, we've got to have a motion. Okay, Jack, it's Bob. All right. I'll make Good. a motion. Uh, application 20-20017 annexation. Uh, that would annex would go from a Residential District RD to propose zoning, which would be uh, planned residential PR. And also for the concept plan, application 20-22005 tax parcel 
089-14-01-001. I would make the motion that we submit it to the city council for approval with the conditions as stated. The 13 conditions that are, are listed. So that's... And, and uh, Bob, would you agree yes. that we would add, I don't know that it's absolutely necessary, but would you agree that we add the speed bumps to that? I don't think they're yes. on there now. <clears throat> well, the only thing that's done. Done. Go ahead. Yeah, I would also say we want to add something um, of getting uh, public safety's uh, weigh in on the access of emergency vehicles and the safety that's of uh, condition three okay yeah, thank you condition three is in there I mean, we got that's in there yeah the All speed right, so, bumps out so that we add uh, so your most to include Go speed ahead. bumps <clears throat> to include uh, that speed bumps be looked at as a possible way of uh, reducing speeding in the neighborhood great okay now is there a second I'll second it. All right. So we got a motion and a second. Now, discussion. Any discussion? Yeah, I just have a quick point of clarification. Um, sure. With the extra um, condition that we just put on, are we? Is that condition going to be worded to where we just politely ask them to look at installing speed humps, or we're dictating that they do install speed humps? Um, My interpretation of the motion would be that we are dictating that they install them. Okay, thank you. Is that yours, Bob? I think what Is I said was to add mean? speed bumps as appropriate, but I will change that, that speed bumps be added uh, appropriately. What is it? Did we say ever 600 feet? 600, mm -hmm. 600 feet. Let, yeah. let me, just, if I might chime in, there's a suggestion maybe just speed humps um as reviewed by the department of public safety and the city engineer yeah okay i would agree with yeah. that yeah Bob. okay yes i would agree with that and the, and the second's okay with that ryan ryan that's second you okay with that yes ryan, yes Rebels. yes ryan. sorry ryan. Just talking about it. Yeah. all right sorry. okay so uh we got a motion we got a second uh we got discussion going on anything else anybody else Okay. So, uh, point of clarification, Jack, just real okay. quick. Uh, so, item number three, the concept plan be reviewed and approved by the Department of Public Safety. So, so that means before they can go forward, the Department of Public Safety has to sign off on this uh, proposed layout, this concept. That's correct. Okay. And that's part of our typical review process. Anyway, they would be looking at any development plans. So if they have issues with it, if they say, well, this, this, this can't work or, or what have you, then what, what happens then? We would have to see how far it deviated from the plan that was the concept plan that was approved. So it allows them to require some minor changes. This is specifically regarding apparatus turnaround. So they can, they can that allows them to review whether um, they're okay with just being able to circle that rear end, that rear side, um, circle as opposed to you know creating a new cul-de-sac somewhere within there also it allows them to look at the uh um the on-street parking at the same time if they wanted to do that okay yeah i mean theoretically if the if the, the public safety said you, you have to do x then that's going to become part of the plan so all right uh Let's uh, let's vote. All in favor of the uh, motion as made and seconded, raise your right hand. All right, we got one, two. Is that everybody? Okay, that's unanimous. All right, thank you. I believe I believe Charles did not vote. I did not. Charles, I'm voting against it. I don't know if okay, you can I'm hear sorry, me or not. I'm sorry, Charles. I'm sorry. I'm trying to see everybody, and I missed. I got you. you. That's no okay, problem. So so we got we got one uh, opposition and uh, remainder exactly. in favor. Okay. All right, Ryan. The next one, next order of business is um, 
3C, application number 20-22006. That's the concept proof of approval only uh, at the uh, Hidden Haven and Polaris Drive by Katan Patel. And uh, is Mr. Patel there somewhere? Mr. Chairman, we have Philip Green uh, representing him this evening. Um, he is the engineer on the project and I have just brought him into the meeting. Okay. So Mr. Green, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, let us know what your, uh, give us a few minutes here on your, what your proposal is. As um, Ryan stated earlier, this is a, uh, we're coming back before you for a concept plan approval. Uh, the one the previous plan that we had approved in 2006, I believe has expired. Uh, we have been annexed to the city. We are currently under a PR zoning. Uh, so we are presenting this concept uh, for your approval tonight. Uh, ultimately, um, similar to the to the previous project, uh, in that um, we are sort of an infill uh, development at the end of an existing road. We are proposing the duplex townhomes, uh, as that is uh, market driven. Uh, what seems to be the uh, the desire of the um, market for affordable housing. And we are providing, uh, when this first went through in 2006, there was a lot of negotiations with uh, the surrounding property owners. Yeah. And, and we have tried to hold the, uh, the 35 foot buffers in places, 25 foot buffers um, adjacent to, uh, to Woodside where they also have a 25 foot buffer. Um, and leave as much uh, natural area as we can on the perimeter of the project to help buffer, uh, particularly the woodside development uh, from us. Um, similar sort of arguments over uh, speeding in neighborhoods and, and, and amount of new traffic. Um, again, we are, while we are 80 units, which provide, uh, produces a significant amount of traffic um, by numbers, uh, again, the, the overall impact uh, is, is fairly small. Um, I'm trying to think of the other, the other questions that were in there. I know some one of the, uh, the concerns that staff had was about the public safety and the fire apparatus turnaround. Uh, we would be perfectly willing to add some turnaround there at the beginning of the project where we tie to Polaris Drive. Uh, we've got the area to do it. I think that would be a good idea to provide that turnaround. Uh, in addition to one of the staff comments about providing the, uh, the landscape island, um, I believe it's uh, 200 foot long. Uh, Ryan, please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that uh, median island as, a, as an entrance feature coming into our subdivision. Um, and as mentioned, uh, the sidewalk uh, being divided on one side. Um, two parking spaces per lot. Um, we got public utility connections, um, water sewer, and the uh, previously the stormwater connection had been made to a storm pipe um, that lies in between two lots in, in Woodside. I will have to go back and research whether or not those easements were procured and are still in place or whether we would have to pursue those, but that would be our stormwater connection point. I'd be glad to answer any questions or does concerns that, that. Yeah, yeah, uh, Philip. Does that stormwater? Does that uh, is that going to require some sort of approval from Woodside? I believe that that, uh, that easement may have already been procured. I'll, I need to to follow up on that. Um, okay. I don't know that. Um, I think that Woodside is a. What the storm system is private, so we, I'm, I'm sure it would uh, to make that connection. Okay, I mean that's a, that's kind of out of our control. If you know what I mean, that's uh, that's going to yes. be a pretty critical issue, I think. From way We'd have to add that as a condition, wouldn't we? Well, Phil, Ryan doesn't think so, but I I'd kind of like to stick it in there just to make sure that uh, 
yeah. you know, any motion we make would be contingent upon the stormwater. I don't think it's ne it's absolutely necessary because it's beyond our pay grade, but I wouldn't mind putting it in there. Have you seen, uh, Mr. Green, have you seen the, uh, the uh, conditions here that the uh, planning commission has recommended, that the planning director has recommended? Yes, sir, the six, six conditions. Correct. Yes, sir. You uh, seen those? Yes, uh, I'm in. I'm in. And, and if we if we may, we might put an additional one on there. I don't know how well, whether we will or not, but we might put an additional one uh, one on there regarding the stormwater being properly handled, whatever that may be, whatever that may require. Yes, sir. I'm I'm comfortable with all those conditions. So. Okay. Uh, okay. Questions? Anybody? Questions? Have you been able to review the detention pond to see if you can? Uh, use that as open space or not? Currently, it's not counted for in our open space numbers. Um, we would certainly be willing to to look at uh, some additional landscaping around the pond to to increase those numbers, if that's what you're asking. Well, that's one of the conditions. Yes, sir. Yeah. About planning the detention pond. Right. But again, it, it, uh, in that condition, it talked about the, uh, the open space dropping below 20%, which we're, we're above that without the detention pond. So, okay. yes, but we, we would certainly look at, at landscaping that, that pond area. I think that benefits everybody. Good. Thank you. How about this one? How about this? Were there any, uh, Ryan or, or, Mr. Green, where there, was there any discussion of speed bumps? There was some issue about speeding with regard to this street too. Is that is that, a, is that consideration in the in through there with speed bumps at all? As far as uh, modifications to the existing to the existing road, I, I don't know that we would want to go into that. I, I think within this. Mission so desired to make that a condition. Uh, I don't think I would be opposed to having those in, in our new infrastructure. Okay. And I know there is um, there's one email uh, that I'm reading that also talks about concerns of sidewalks, of walking dogs, speed bumps, four way stops, very similar to the last discussion that we've had. What consideration or discussion have you guys had? about the safety of pedestrians walking uh, their dogs um, with the new build, with the new development coming. Well, again, for, for what's within our control, um, you know, we, we're gonna add our sidewalks and we're gonna design our roads and have the, have the parking to, uh, to create a safe environment. Um, again, I don't know how much, you know, we need to go into other neighborhoods and, and city right away um, to make improvements. I know Ryan touched on the fact that in the in the previous approval, there were some cost sharing to be made within that existing neighborhood. Um, I'm sure my client would be would be open to discussions with the city if uh, if we wanted to pursue some sort of cost sharing on that as well. How about the issue of, uh, there's a couple of questions here about uh, your intention is to build these homes for sale, not for rental units. Is that correct? Yes, sir. that's my understanding is to have individual lots, um, much like the um, townhome duplexes that are in uh, Hidden Haven, uh, up closer to um, Silver Bluff. Okay. And how about the utilities? How are they going? Are, are these underground utilities? Are these coming in overhead or underground? Underground. Underground. Okay. That's good. I believe there was uh, several folks were concerned about the water pressure uh, because uh, unfortunately, evidently in the existing subdivisions there, there's a, an issue with uh, the water pressure. So I don't know if you've been able to look at that. I have not, I saw that comment. Uh, we have not really reached that point in, in design to look at the water pressure. I think we work with the uh, city engineering and utilities departments uh, to ensure that, that not only would that we had 
sufficient pressure and volume for fire protection within our neighborhood, but that the overall system was not compromised due to these additional. Mr. Chairman, I, we have John Poole, city engineer on here, and we had discussed this, and I think that they had heard several comments previously from the neighborhood um, recently, and John can correct me, I think there was variable speed pumps that were installed on some of the um, the, the, the wells and, and treatment facilities around there to be able to kind of dial in those pressures. And for some time they've been working on ensuring that that's sufficient in all areas. I think it's just kind of taken some time for them to, to work some of that out. I see him on here now. Hey, hey Ryan, we, we have recently installed some water pipes out there. Um, some of the, uh, we, I believe we were talking about the low pressure at some of the uh, service lines now. Um, our understanding is there may be some uh, pressure reducer valves that were installed prior to the project that we did that still may be uh, reducing that pressure. Um, we're also looking at valve operation as far as the actual main line system to see if any of those valves are closed. But yeah, we recently did a very good uh, capital improvement project out there brought all those lines uh, up to current standards so that there should be good water pressure. So just to clarify, I think this might be the benefit for the benefit of people watching those pressure reducing valves are typically property by property in some cases where people have installed them on their own tap into their uh, property and they might look at that. Correct, so those would be privately owned uh, devices. Mr. Green, can you please give us a uh, quick rundown of the timeline for this project? I would anticipate um, we're probably looking at between all the uh, the approvals that we have to get for the plans uh, 90, 100 to 120 days out before construction would start. Um, again, probably a similar timeline to the uh, to the previous development, uh, putting 80 lots on the ground. Um, selling these units uh, probably in the three to five year range. Thank you. All right. Uh, it's just, just as a matter of uh, your information, uh, Mr. Green, and I know you realize this, this water pressure issue, if, if they thing can't get fixed or resolved, that's that's going to be an issue in selling this property. Uh, so I yes, hope sir. there's I hope you y'all can somehow the city and you can can work that out because that that's issue's been around a while. I don't I don't live in there so I don't know how bad it is, but I know I've heard about it for a while now. It's been around a while. So could we could we possibly put that in as a condition? And the question to Ryan or Jack, could we put that in as a condition? The water pressure. So similar to, I guess, my prior answer on stormwater, that's something that, so, and John's still on here, you can correct me, but they, they will, as part of the fire um, suppression, the, you know, uh, the putting in uh, fire plugs and things like that, they're going to be looking at whether there's sufficient pressure to do that when, it, when a new subdivision comes in. So as part of the development plan, they'll, they'll look at what, what the, They'll, they'll study the water system around there as part of it and their connections to it. But again, okay, so we don't have to do anything extra. You don't have to if you make if you feel comfortable based on the comments given that um, kind of let people know that you are aware of that and that we are working to address those as part of a development plan. Then you can feel free to do that. Sometimes um, the board does like to do that just to reiterate that to make sure it gets addressed. Okay. If I if I could add, um, you know, with this information coming up. Um, and obviously it being, it being brought up at this point, uh, I, I am going to advise my client that he needs to get this answered before he moves very much further forward at all uh, with the development and spends any more money. Is, if this is something that will stop this development, he needs to know that now. So, we, you know, it, it's in his interest to get this resolved. Yeah, uh, well, or rather it's, than later. Yeah. it's certainly in his interest because it will affect the saleability of them I, I, I think it might I don't know I don't know how bad it is you know it's you just hear stuff uh kind of off rumors and this kind of thing some of them are worthwhile some of them are not but uh, I'd look at it I'd tell them to take a look at it okay uh any other comments Mr. Green 
Any no, there's nothing for me. I, I answer any questions you got, though. All right. Anybody got questions? Any other questions? So, Mr. Green, have you looked at the entrance? Uh, it's a long ways off Silver Bluff, and that that road is really narrow, especially there on the entrance. Can you going to be able to get all your equipment in there safely? I believe so. Um, the way that they state construction. Um, they usually do a pretty good job of it, bringing the equipment in and out. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, as people may be kind of, or as the board may be kind of considering some other questions, I do have several comments that have come in. In the meantime, okay. it might be a good opportunity to. Just, yeah, let's hear them. All right. Um, so the first one here I have uh, from Peter uh, Messina. Uh, he, he is on the board of directors of Woodside POA, Woodside Plantation POA, uh, says he's a licensed professional engineer and planner and very concerned about the stormwater impacts. Uh, he's in charge of road maintenance in Woodside, has been heading up that review committee, uh, which includes the city manager and professional staff concerning uh, severe erosion problems in the ravine, which is where this is a 15, uh, 15 to 18 foot ravine directly downstream from the proposed development. I'm aware there'll be stormwater runoff uh, related to the 80 new units. Uh, the proposed development stormwater is proposed to enter into a storm inlet between two residential uh, occupied lots on Sweet Bay, and they would need permission to cross the uh, 25 foot buffer. We discussed that in the in the um, prior the the pre meeting or the work session. Um, I don't think they have the right carte blanche to cross the POA and privately owned uh, property. And um, we do not know if the proposed stormwater will exceed the capacity of the city's internal storm pipe system blowing through um, Woodside and any additional upstream impervious surface will definitely impact our development. In addition, as a professional planner with over 40 years experience in land development planning, I feel a 25 foot buffer um, to the Woodside proper properties is insufficient to, or sorry, extremely insufficient to buffer the new project from the existing homes. I'm aware the developer is looking for conceptual approval. I'm not sure what rights uh, that eventually will give him. I think there are a number of engineering and legal hur hurdles uh, for him to cross first. And then he did follow up. I see here, I had another um, email that came, let me find it. Um, and just saying that he wasn't aware of any e existing easements into Woodside. So again, um, with the board, you may wanna look at, at you know, you could, you could obviously will be looking at that, but um, it'll be um, it's something you could condition. I have another email here from um, Madison Brantley, uh, resident of Sweet Bay Drive, received the letter regarding um, the proposed duplexes. They bought their home last May and anticipated having a private backyard, very concerned with the duplexes and not in favor of the plan. I'm concerned because of the retention pond and mosquitoes and trash um, from the runoff and smell. I'm concerned that the 80 units will come with various levels of noise and the possibility of individuals having access to uh, jumping a fence or coming into Woodside Plantation, increasing chance of break-ins as well as theft, not to mention property value from her home she anticipates would go down uh, as part of these duplexes being in her or visible from her backyard. We have a comment here from Brenda Conway, and it uh, says, beg you to reject the proposed development of the Lamplighter Villages um, unless there is another avenue to access them other than Hidden Haven Drive. Uh, they they for, uh, ask for forgiveness for lateness of the submission. Um, they, they were uh, one of the signatories to the comments from the Melrose 3 HOA, but also wanted to give their individual thoughts. It says Mayor Osmond lives just across Silver Bluff from Hidden Haven, so already has some idea of how narrow and potentially dangerous the small street is. And I invite the um, anybody interested to drive past Rutherford, Sonoma, Merlot, and Trace with those are those first lots as you come into the, or the first streets as you come into the Hidden Haven neighborhood or the uh, Melrose, the, the townhomes. Um, and they are concerned about the imminent um, opening of the Woods Farm, farm Market. Uh, they said that just yesterday, the city had to replace a, a stop sign in the area um, and the bank of mailboxes were also hit recently. Um, either way, it's becoming, uh, she feels it's becoming a more dangerous strip because of speeders and elderly drivers. 
should only be built at ingress or regress is not on Hidden Haven. Uh, Woodside Plantation is adjacent and provides a perfect option. Uh, none of the streets in Woodside have either congestion or speeding problems that Hidden Haven does, and the pattern of streets per se prohibits speeding through the community. Thank you for your time and attention. Um, it will also impact our safety as we drive and walk around our neighborhood. Uh, as already illustrated, we have uh, various speeding issues, which compounds with the number of vehicles on our short, narrow streets. And then we had some come in in the meantime. This is from Will Cozy. Uh, Dear sir, ma'am, I'd like to offer a perspective. It hits the matter of the city uh, as it, uh, it, and the city offices. The money bag, the proposed development uh, listed uh, by the extension of Player Strive will cost the city money. Uh, why you may ask, the fact that there are 80 units of an average household, um, or sorry, yeah, an average household of three people, that's 240 people, uh, plus animals, garbage, con contributions to the proposed retention basin, um, they, that appear to provide tax dollars for the first year, but with the depression and de uh, degradation of the area after the first year, the effect on surrounding property values, including those in Woodside and resale of those properties uh, will, not recover from the lasting effects. There are a number of examples where this has occurred in other communities or in other communities here in Aiken, as well as other cities. And I urge you to deny that uh, Polaris Drive um, extension for the negative effects on the, on the neighborhood. Let's see here, I have, they're asking which lot has the storm drain and, and what exactly would a tie-in involve um, which is a pertinent question. Um, there's another one. Why do we need resident? This is from Sharon Roll or Rowell. Um, what, why do we need additional townhomes built here when there are numerous other properties already like Kimber Downs uh, propose a uh, new multifamily as part of the, or proposed new, new multifamily as part of the mall development. And um, that is, and they're asking, what is the price point for the townhomes? How does it affect the Woodside community that adjoins uh, the existing development? Well, I'm curious. I am curious. Are you through, Ron? Is that you through? I believe so. I'm going to sort through. There's several others that came in <laughs> on the previous one that I'm having to kind of wade through, but I'll, I'll, I'll take a look. But I think All right, well, let me, let me let me ask Mr. Green. <laughs> Mr. Green, I'm curious a little bit about price point, there's, there's going to be uh, duplexes, 40 of them, oh, 80 buildings, 40 units, correct? Correct. Um, what's going to be the price point? Do you have anything in your mind at all? I, I don't, um, and I apologize, the developer couldn't be on tonight with us. Um, I, I honestly don't uh, don't have he's where he's at on the, on the uh, point. Okay. All right. What is what's going to be the size? You have any idea of the size? No, sir. Again, I, I don't believe he got that far um, in his development of the uh, of the structure. Okay. All right. Did you, uh, Mr. Question? Green? Yes, yeah, sir. Go ahead, uh, Bob. Did, did you look at the previous concept plan that was approved by the city council? The 2005? Yes, sir. Yes. There were a lot of uh, items added that uh, unfortunately we didn't get a chance to talk about in the work session, but um, the city committed to a lot of things, adding speed humps, um, adding a six foot tall wooden privacy fence on the northern boundary. Uh, a lot of improvements to the uh, entrance highway from Silver Bluff. So I'm just curious. It looks like there's a lot of concern with the entry and also the border with Woodside, <clears throat> not to mention all the agreements that need to be worked out with Woodside on the stormwater issue. And then there's the water pressure issue with the city. It just seems like there's a lot of things outside your subdivision that that need to be resolved. 
Yes, I mean, if that was an issue 15 years ago, I would think it's uh, still an issue. It is, and again, I know that the, uh, there was a lot of work done with the Woodside community uh, 15 years ago, um, and, and I don't know whether those easements were procured. Uh, to answer the question, I guess, that the uh, was submitted, um, what it would look like, there is a stormwater structure in between those two uh, lots. And this would be an underground pipe that would tie to those structures. Um, the city has a very stringent uh, pension requirement in that the 25-year uh, the runoff event uh, be changed and released at the two-year pre-developed rates. Uh, so I would not anticipate those uh, those flows causing any issue downstream uh, within the system or within the uh, website development. In the, in the I mean, I don't think, I think uh, the, the stormwater issue, that's an issue that's kind of beyond us. We can put, we can make, we can uh, make a request. Uh, anything we do can be contingent upon stormwater. We can put it in there, but even if we don't put it in there, they're going to have to meet the stormwater um, requirements. Uh, and those requirements are tough. They are tough. Uh, so um, that that may be an issue. I don't I don't know. I don't know. But we can put it in. We can put it in our proposal. But um, and and that may that may be a bigger issue than you think it is, Mr. Green. I don't know. I hope I hope it works. But um, all right. Any other questions? So we have additional comments here. This is from uh, Linda Rodriguez. That doesn't feel that we have enough information to be able to vote on this this evening. Um, asking about the price points, if there is an estimated price point and square footage. Um, I don't think this went into our staff report, but I, I think we estimated them um, to be uh, the, the and, and Mr. Green can, can but at least drawn out on the plan. They, they're kind of on the, uh, I think a little over 2,000 square feet for the, the full duplex building, but they, it might be a little more generous than that, I, I believe. Um, well, to, inter to interject real quick, this is just um, this is just for zoning that we're doing, not a concept plan, correct? No, this is you're approving a concept. So uh, that, that's yeah. what's up for approval this evening is the concept plan. It's already zoned plan residential. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so what you're approving is the concept plan, or, or considering um, recommendation of is the concept plan that's before you. Um, additionally, there was a. Um, there's a question, an additional question about being more specific when responding to traffic issues. Um, they would like for staff to reiterate what the conditions are, and we can do that, um, that are listed in the staff report. Um, they're, they're reiterating that they believe that speed humps are needed in Hidden Haven. And uh, they're asking if this, if the city will do anything regarding high sidewalks for the Hidden Haven portion of the development, um, and believes that the the, the planning commission um, should should table the item until we we have a plan for that. Uh, I have another. Uh, this is from and the. the <laughs> This is kind of, I guess we haven't, we don't typically deal with this either. This is from somebody who I don't have a, uh, a name for, but um, a Francis, but they were saying that the S curve on Hidden Haven Drive uh, doesn't safely allow for passage of a school bus. How will heavy construction vehicles make it through the S turn? Um, the, uh, this is another uh, from Peter Messina. Um, a, agreeing that it would be great to have a condition for a solid fence that would border Woodside. And finally, asking- What, Ryan, I, did, I missed it. Oh, sorry. Uh, again, they would be in favor of there being a solid wood fence on the, um, where the property borders Woodside. I'm, I'm assuming we'd probably, if that were to be a consideration, you'd want to determine whether that's within the buffer or before you get to the buffer, that sort of thing, um, if that were to be required. And then finally, they're asking whether the prior ordinance that was in 2005 still applicable. It is not. And just to clarify why it is not is that if that ordinance um, that was developed, if it was uh, that essentially the development 
authority from that ordinance lasted for five years since no building permits were pulled and have not uh, did not initiate within that five year period then there within our ordinance that um, is 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 up for reconsideration so that's what you're doing now is reconsidering the concept plan for this planned residential zone property so originally brian the concept plan was approved you know in 05 the concept plan was approved for 40 units. It had a very similar layout. It kind of had another small cul-de-sac uh, as you first enter into it straight ahead, I would guess I would say. Now it has two cul-de-sacs at the end. Those still existed, but they were uh, single family homes at that point as well. But the concept right. plan was approved with several conditions about, um, again, cost sharing for additional sidewalk improvements. But it had a number of offsite improvements that had um, have been required straightening out the S curve, adding um, some overlay and reconstructing some roads, uh, sidewalk systems. I think the fence along Woodside was in there as well. So there were a number of conditions placed on that, but there also was a, lot, a number of cost sharing items with that as well. Okay. Okay. Um, also, the, uh, the current buffer, if I'm reading this correctly, it says it's going to be 15 to 25 feet. Is that correct? <laughs> It shows 20, and Philip can correct me, it shows 25 and that would be in addition to the 25 already owned by the Woodside POA. So it'd be a total essentially of a 50 foot wide undisturbed buffer um, with, with the Woodside property. Okay, well, now uh, going I'm back wrong. to the old ordinance, going back to the old ordinance again, it had a 35 foot um, untouched buffer. Was that old 35 foot untouched buffer in addition to the 25 as well or? Was our my basic question is is the buffer getting larger or smaller compared to the old ordinance? I believe it's smaller than okay. than the old ordinance. Okay. Feet. Yeah, it was it was still an addition, okay. but it was, it was yeah. Okay, I don't know if anybody on this call can answer this, but Woodside has a uh, I believe it's a six foot fence around the total subdivision. It's my understanding. So. I, I don't know the answer to this question. I don't know if the if the fence is outside the twenty five buffer twenty five foot buffer around Woodside, or if it's on the inside of the twenty five foot buffer. And I don't know if anybody knows the answer to that. I don't. I don't know the answer. But if you but if the total buffered area is going to be fifty feet, that's a pretty good uh, distance. I mean that's a that's a that's a pretty good buffer, uh, yeah. So, I, but I don't know the answer to your question where the, where the fence is currently, Bob. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Ryan? Any anything else? We're we're giving. We'll wait another. Uh, we'll wait one more minute. Uh, let's, somebody, let's start yeah. the timer, Ryan. One minute. Uh, anything that comes in, we'll hear. But we got to cut it off. So one minute, and then we will uh, move on. In the meantime, we did get one more comment. Um, again, this is from uh, Ms. Rodriguez that said that they walked the property and that the wood and that Woodside, um, I guess the fence had been breached at some point. So um, that tells me it may be on the outside of the buffer. <laughs> I don't know that for certain. Um, we would definitely confirm that as part of all this, but the uh, typically you would want it against the property just so that um, well, what you're kind of trying to prevent is property owners from then going in there after and then clearing out the buffer, adding it to their yard, and then it kind of just negates the, the purpose of the buffer. So typically, we would try to require the fence on the property side of a buffer if there is a fence. Yeah. Right. Right. That's right. Okay. Thank you. So I just had one more comment and our one minute period is lapsed, but um, they said, I guess I'll kind of clean this up. The uh, junk fence on the outside of the buffer backs up to, so it's on the outside of the buffer and backs up to some existing property. So they, um, they're saying that the, they're, they're confirming that the buffer, that the fence, uh, the existing fence is on the outside of the buffer. So Ryan, that existing fence okay. that they're saying is that's actually Woodstock's, correct? That's junk. 
That's my understanding. Um, that we could take yeah. some, we could, we could look at that again, but that's, uh, I, 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 I believe, so. I don't, I don't think offense was ever. Well, that, uh, that's, yeah. well, that's the opinion of that, uh, that person who wrote that, uh, email or whatever that it's a jump fence you know that's an opinion and may, he may be right i don't know i don't know what it looks like and again that's usually kind of the purpose right. of not uh, having a fence so, on the back gotcha. most, you know fences are good if they're if they're right and they're attractive and, and all that but sometimes they don't help they don't look any better than, than the, than the uh, trees and the shrubs but at any rate um okay Again, now we got to have a motion. And Mr. Well, Mr. What's Chairman, your, what's your pleasure on this one? Uh, one. Yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, they asked. Uh, we did get, receive a couple comments ahead, to reiterate the the proposed conditions of approval. So I'll do that. The proposed conditions were that a site and landscape plan comply with the landscape and tree preservation requirement, that the signage comply with the requirements of the zoning ordinance, that a bump out or half cul-de-sac cul or similar measure be placed at the beginning of the new development designated in conjunction with the required entrance median and sufficient to accommodate a fire apparatus turnaround that a landscape median and cul-de-sac medians be included in the design. So that's kind of reiterative there. Um, that additional open space should be provided in the detention pond, if, if the detention pond cannot be planted, causing the open space to go below the 20%. Again, that's just essentially reiterating the 20% requirement and that the applicant sign an agreement stating the conditions of approval within 180 days. And to that, if we wanted to, we could add stormwater, the conditions be, uh, be met and speed bumps. If we wanted to add those two to it, we could. That's correct. And I believe uh, water, pre it's ensuring adequate water pressure by the city engineer, I think was also a, a, something that came up as part of the discussion. Okay. Okay. What's your uh, what's your pleasure here, folks? Mr. Chairman, in regards to the uh, concept plan approval for tax parcel number one zero seven dash zero seven dash one six dash zero zero one, zoning is planned residential. I recommend that we move the city council uh, with the possible conditions as stated one through six with the additional comments uh, or conditions being added. Uh, number seven being the easement for the stormwater um, issue being addressed and uh, completed. Uh, number eight, that the water pressure um, is looked into and resolved if needed. Number nine would be the addition of speed bumps as notated by the city engineer and public safety. And number 10, that a privacy fence be added to the back portion of the property as noted in the original concept plan in 2005. Can we Sorry. maybe add a okay. bump out for a fire truck? That's, that's in there. Oh, it is, excuse me. The bump out's in there in number three. Thank you. All right, second. Do we have a second? Second. second. Okay. We got a motion. We got a second. Any further discussion? The only further discussion is I think uh, citizens or the individuals living in the area wanted to know the price point for the houses uh, that will be built there. I'm not sure if that's something outside of this or I so much lose sight of that. Yeah, I mean that's uh, obviously the, they're going to be. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not. No, I'm not going to go on the record because I don't know. But uh, if, if I don't know that we want to put that into the in our in our motion. Um, if you could get that price point to uh, uh, Ryan, if you could talk to him or Mr. Green, and talk to the developer and and send something to Ryan and Ryan, you could stick it in an email to us. I'd I'd be that'd satisfy me. But um, any other discussion? Okay. Is it stormwater easement? The condition number seven was stormwater access agreement. That the easement, yeah, and the agreement be considered or fixed if needed. But, but you got you got to solve the stormwater issue. Hundred percent. That's, 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 that's I was just I was just questioning how we worded that. I thought it was uh, access to stormwater. 
storm water uh, has got to, the storm water requirements for disposing or handling storm water has got to be. Uh, well, there's we, an we agreement really that has to be it. worked out with Woodside. That's the way I understood it. Well, I don't know that that's, I don't know that that's true, Bob, but I don't know the answer, but maybe they can do it without Woodside. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think we should box them into just Woodside. No, no, I agree. Okay. I agree. I don't think we can box them in. If they can handle it, however they need to handle it, they can. Ha they got to handle it. The simplest and then okay, most so inexpensive way may be tying into Woodside. But that may not happen. Okay. okay all well, in favor, raise your Well, hold it. So tell me what the condition is, number seven, because I'm still... What What did we agree to? What are we agreeing to? Do you want, we, you want to reiterate uh, the conditions? Yes. 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 All right. Here's what I have for the additional conditions beyond one through six. I have that the um, that the development as part of the development plan that there shall be that. Um, sorry, let me try this again. As part of the development plan that that City of Aiken stormwater management regulations be satisfied uh, by the uh, under sorry under approval of the city engineer that uh, the city, and again, under direction of the city engineer that uh, water pressure be deemed sufficient for the new development and not um, to the detriment of the adjacent neighbors, that the um, city review uh, the addition of speed humps as part of the development by the city engineer and public safety um, department and that um, a fence requirement along the 25 foot buffer be required as stated in the original approval in 2005. Okay. okay. You, okay. Thank you clear? You. We clear? Okay. All in favor? Raise your right hand. See my hand, Jack. I see it. You're voting in the affirmative this time, right? All right. Anybody yes. voting in the negative? Anybody voting in the negative? Okay, approved unanimously. All right, do I have a motion for adjournment? So move. Motion to adjourn. So move, second. All Great. in favor, raise your hand. All right, thank you guys, we're out of here.